right. So now we're live on Zoom and, and Facebook. So hi, everybody. Um, I'm Evox Free. I'm head of editorial at Professional Beauty Group. And today's webinar in our daily webinar series is how to become a winner in nail competitions. Today's webinar is sponsored by NSI Nail Systems International. So I'll be pasting a link to their website um, here in the chat box in Zoom and also over on Facebook in just a sec so that you can find out a little bit more about them there. Um, but NSI does also have an offer for anyone watching this webinar, which is for 20% off orders over £25 net. So to get that offer, you just need to enter the code DEN20 at the checkout and I'll paste that code in the chat as well here. Um, so today's webinar is hosted by Denise Wright. Denise is competition director for the nail competitions at all the professional beauty shows in, uh, across the UK and Ireland. Um, she's also got her own salon and training academy and is a global brand ambassador for NSI Nails. So hi, Denise. Hi, how are you doing? Good, so thanks for joining us. Um, so just before Denise starts with her presentation, um, just to let you know, we will have plenty of time at the end for questions. So if you're watching in Zoom, you should be able to see a little Q&A box at the bottom of your screen. So if you click on that and type any questions there, then we will get as many as possible answered at the end. Um, and if you're watching over on Facebook, then just type them in the comments section of the video and we will get to them very soon. Um, fabulous. So Denise, do you want to get started? I can. So do you want me to share my screen so we can yeah. go through? Great. Hi, everyone. Uh, lovely to see you all. Nice to see you uh, checking in, which is great. Let me just have a look on here. Can you see my thing? Oh. Oh. Voila, are we there? Yeah, there we go. Excellent, hi everyone. Glad to see you. Any, any of you that are competition newbies or those of you who've been competing for a long time, I'm here to answer all your questions and hopefully give you some hints and tips in this PowerPoint. And if you want any sort of training or advice, you can either email me or contact Professional Beauty or just email nowcompetitions at gmail.com. So literally, let's see what we've got. So what I wanted to talk about today is why enter competitions in the first place. We have lots of competitions over the UK and they are such a learning curve. And if you look at the industry as a whole, the people you see in the magazines, the people you're following on the Instagram, on Facebook, on all the things on social media, a lot of them have come through the competition circuit and they've actually gone on to do lots of amazing things. So it's a massive door opener for you. So it gives you opportunities that you can improve your skills and in your career, give you more choices, which is just amazing. So yes, it does improve your skills and that's just for salons. So don't think, oh, well, I don't want to do competitions. It actually improves your skill in the salon as well. It gives you a massive discipline of time because when you compete, when we say, hands down, that's it. You have to stop. You can't, it's not like in a salon where you can say to your client, oh, I'm just gonna be another five minutes. It doesn't work that way. So it makes you push yourself to literally adhere to time. So it makes you much more disciplined. It also raises your standards and that comes through in your, in your normal salon work. Plus also it gives you fantastic pictures to actually give um, onto your website. The clients love to see and hear about you comp competing to them, it's exciting. For them to go, oh, my nail tech, she actually like competes, she competes all the time, look at my nails. You could even give away like for modeling as well for that to give you practice and they just love it. They'll market you for yourself, especially now with social media is such a massive thing. When I first started competing, it was a photograph in a newspaper <laughs> and you had to really work hard to get the, the uh, reporter to come around and, and write about you. So it's so much easier now. So it gives your salon a bit of an edge Plus also, why do you think people compete? Why do you think Olympians compete, sport or anything? It's a massive adrenaline buzz. You're competing with yourself. You're actually pushing yourself and it gives you that buzz. Especially when you're waiting for those awards, your heart is pounding and it's just, you know, it's such a thing and it gives you a massive amount of pride. So if you think, oh, do you know, I'd actually like to just push myself. Where do you start? You start where you're comfortable. And that for you might be in gel polish, if that's your speciality, start with where you're comfortable because you need to get your balance and get your feel. And it needs a lot of planning and preparation. And, and I think people underestimate that. They say, oh, I do it every day. I don't need to plan. I just go in there, I do my thing. It's not like that at all. When you get there, your nerves kick in. You've got to plan it. You've got to get your time scales down. When I first start practicing 
we our competitions always used to be two hours to two and a half hours. When I first start practicing before, probably six to eight weeks before I started competing, because it takes that time for me to home in on every single part of the aspect that I'm doing. It used to take me about three hours and you sort of think, what am I doing? I do this every day in an hour. Why is it taking me three? Because you're trying so hard to make it perfect. It doesn't flow. And you've got to get that plan in and that time scale down. So you just get in and there, we just go bang, 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 bang. Yep, do that, do that, do that, do that each section. So you keep to that time. So lots of preparation. Also, I always used to have a kit just for competing. There is nothing worse than turning up and you've forgotten something. I've even had a friend of mine who was competing and uh, we sat down there and she just looked at me, she went, have you got a brush? And I've gone, I need the one I'm using. And then you've got five minutes before it starting, you're running around like a loony to buy a new brush or something you've forgotten or your nail forms or something's leaked on something. So prepare yourself and make sure you check it. So write a list, tick it off and make sure you've got that because everything needs to be clean. So practice, 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 get it down to a fire art. Get your model, get a really good model. I had the same model for 10 years. So she became my eyes, my ears, because you're concentrating so hard. You don't hear what they're saying over the loudspeaker. She became my eyes. She actually looked at my table and said, right, you know, the floor judge is coming over, pick that up, that looks a bit messy, you know, and you get that good relationship. So train her to do that. And also get her to read the rules because you what you think you read and sometimes what you read is totally different reading the rules is my biggest bugbear the amount of people that turn up and they just assume the root the rules don't change but they do we have to adapt and tweak them because things arise after every competition so we tighten them up i rewrite them every time some things are very similar and if we introduce a new category it is different the general rules is about what happens on the floor. So it's telling you about what to expect when you come, what your deadlines are, and get your model's notes in there. If it says your model has to wear black, she wears black. If it says she can't have any jewellery, don't let her wear any jewellery. If it says she can't have um, tattoos or anything like that, then you do need to find a new model because it all goes against you. And how I can put that, it's like being in the driving school, okay? so. Imagine if your driving instructor says turn right and you turn left, you're still participating, but you won't win because you've not, it's, it's horrible to take points away from someone just because they're not abiding by the rules. I know how much passion, hard work goes into that. I competed for 15 years myself. So it just is like soul destroying and it really breaks my heart. So then we have the floor judges rules. They're easy points. If it says have your hair tied back, tie your hair back. If it says been with a lid, it is a bin with a lid. It's not a bin without a lid. So just read rules and tick it off and make sure you've got that because they're simple. They're easy. Your individual category rules are specifically for that one that you're entering. So read those and please don't cheat because it's soul destroying for the people around you. It's embarrassing for us to have to take points off you. And I've won all my life without cheating. So there's no need. Score sheets. Floor score sheets means rules mean points. So individual category score sheets are available before the competition. So don't assume what they're judging, look for what they're judging, make sure you hit all the points and you can give that to your model. So she's your second set, set of eyes, you can turn your nail to the side, let's have a look at your side balls, let's look down your C curve, oh, you've got dust underneath there, you know, all those bits. If they're not up on the website, ask for them, you can email them, they're available for that. They might sometimes be tweaked on wording because when we sit down with the judges at the show, we all brainstorm from there as well, just to check the sheets are absolutely right. Um, the wording might change slightly, but it's, there's no surprises really, it's just wording. If you don't understand any of the terminology on your score sheets, ask a question. You can ask on the day by raising your hand. I always say to someone, it really doesn't matter. If you raise your hand to ask a question, wouldn't you rather know what, what you're asking about rather than get a clear answer rather than assume what is, is on there? So be clear what's required of you. Judges also mark your nail skills, such as tip length, shape, apex placement. Now, apex placement, every company will teach you slightly differently. 
years ago it always used to be in the center of the now but then different styles came in now we've got pipe we've got longer nails apexes are at the back third halfway so we don't want any judge to influence where the apex is so what we say about apex is that it's consistent across all the nails it's all about consistency so no personal style can actually then hinder your marking and that's what you know makes it quite good so look at your product control application and finishing skills on the score sheets years ago when i used to compete believe it or not there was only three marks zero one two and three i mean oh my god if you they said oh but zero's good to me, zero was soul destroying. I was a bit like, I've just, you know, flogged, my, flogged myself for two hours and you've given me a zero. So uh, I, I then tried to do it out of five points when I became a competition director, but then judges would give a 2.5 and that again, didn't make it easier. So I did it out of 10 to try and make it fairer. And also you get a bigger margin between first and second place and third place, which makes it easier and, and fairer. So five is salon, okay? And I wanna call back number five, it's just general salon. So you're a good tech, but you're doing salon work in a competition and you need to up your grade. The four is still salon, but it's on the, the lower end of the salon. You could still do improvements. And then six is your high end salon, but you want to really aim for the seven, eight, nine, and 10 to be in competition level. So you've got to be honest with yourself and you've got to look at pictures and see what's required. Because remember, we are looking for a beautiful set of nails. We're not asking them to last two weeks. We're asking them to give us the best beautiful. So if we took a photo of those, they could actually be absolutely stunning and showing off the work and the colors of your work that you can do. Then we get into in specific rules. So for example, this is a gel polish one. So with the gel polish one, it would be literally specific rules that it tells you whether it's one hand or two hands. And again, this changes from competition to competition, which people say, well, why would you do that? And half of it is about scheduling. Depends what time we're given to how many competitions we've got to fit in for how many people want to compete. A lot of people want to compete in multiple ones. So we need the times between the changing for registration. So have a look at the rules and ask what specifically is there. If it says two hands, be prepared. If it's one hand, happy days. And look at the time it's given as well, because that varies. Sometimes we're a little bit harsher because we're really pushing you. If it's a new competition, we tend to give you a little bit longer to settle into it, okay? So on gel polish, on the French, for example, if it says no pearlized finishes or uh, any glitters, don't pick one because you like the color. OK, if you like the color, and it's got a shimmer in it. It's no good for competing. So if it says a red, we want a red. It's a pillar box red. We don't want an orange. We don't want a burgundy. It has to be a, a true red. OK, so again, read the rules and ask the question. Always have some spares in your in your pot just in case we're not happy with the color. Salon now is usually um, quite a good one. We used to do it where salon now didn't have a smile line, but most of the salon nails across the world make you have a smile line. So the difference between salon and pink and white is just generally the length, okay? So salon now is 15 millimeters on your pink and 10 millimeters on your white. C curve 30 to 40%. We've changed it slightly where before you'd have to buff the nail to a high shine. You now have the choice because there's so many LED top coats around now that allows you to do that. But remember, if you ask a competition person who's hardcore, they'll always buff to a shine. Why? Because it slims the nails down. It doesn't puff. It doesn't get any spikes anywhere. But if you're not confident or you're running out of time, you can use it. So we have changed that rule for you. It's your choice. But think about points. Oil can be used now because I'm sick and tired of trying to like smell your files, try and catch people that have got oil in them. And But do remember too much oil that if it comes through and it's dripping off the nails, we are going to take five points off because, you know, we don't want to be covered in it. And actually too much oil can make them dull. So salon now is a shorter now. Then you've got like pink and white, which is 2020. So that's um, a longer nail, but still um, pink and white. It has to be the same from behind as well. 
C curve depth is 45 to 60%, uh, so it's much deeper. We've made it over the 50% now to allow you to have a deeper curve because people were, is a bit more of a, a balance where it used to be totally 50%. It can actually look shallower than what you want. So we're giving you a bit of leeway there. So again, drills are now allowed to be used over all the competitions because a lot of people do use them now. So um, you can use those. I want to talk to you about powders because when opaque powders came in, people thought, happy days, we can extend the nail plate, we can make it do what you like, which is really good. But opaques don't buff up really well. So then you need to like put something over and it's little tricks like that that people sometimes don't tell you. So if you're using an opaque pink, you can drop like a pink silk over top, which is like a clear with a hint of pink. So when it's buffed up, it just pops the color. So try things on a white tissue and have a look and see if you put an opaque on, put a clear on the top next to it, leave it by itself and then put like a sheer pink on and see how it pops. And then you can actually um, have a look at your model, look at her skin tone and then see what's nice for her. So you can get different techniques by layering. It gives you benefits. But if you're going to go through it too much, what you don't want is any shadowing. So in your practice before you go, make sure you've got it totally right and don't change your mind on the day. A lot of people go, oh, I've been practicing that, and then they chicken out on the day, and that's the worst thing you can do. You want to just go in and just get straight on it. You don't want to think, oh, shall I, shall I? Because if the nerves start to kick in, that's where we have a little bit of a problem. So have a go, but I always used to put like a, a silk over the top of mine, just to pop it, you know, or a hint of pink. We'd have one called Radiant Pink, that's quite good over it as well. So have a look and see what tones are good for you. Check your ratio. When you compete, we're in a massive hall. We're not in your cozy little salon. So if you're early in the morning, the heaters haven't gone on yet, the um, people are in and out the doors setting up, so you find the cold air comes in. And what you find is, is that your powder and your liquids or your setting up products aren't performing the same. With acrylics, it can be that it's not that nice pearly white that's in that first one. It could be it's dripping because it's too wet because it's getting a bit too cold. Or if you're overcompensating, it's too dry. So things you can do then is you have your hot water bottles, which warms your, your model's hands up, which then makes it set up a lot better. You can have like baby warmers that are just going to warm up your liquid before it goes into your daffin dish. Little hints and ticks, you know, talk to season uh, competition winners and competitors and see what they actually do. Because there's lots of hints and tricks you can do um, to make it all. So just play around with your product before you start your competition. So there's no surprises. It's not going to run into your cuticle and you just get into a bit of a meltdown. We have quite a few tears sometimes when people get a bit stressed because it's not working properly. But there's things you can do to minimise all of that. If you're going to be using tips, there's lots of different tips on the market. We're lucky now because years ago we used to have to like melt them and mould them on site to make them more of a C curve and um, pinch them to uh, until like, you know, your poor model's fingers about to like lose its circulation. But you have some beautiful tips now. So you can only use a clear or natural, you can't use a white tip. So that is just down to personal preference. So I wouldn't advise you which one to use. I would say that you need to do for yourself. There's little tricks to do with forms, cutting down the size to make your C curves a lot deeper. So when you go on some competition workshops, you'll find some new techniques that allows you. I mean, I hardly ever pinch now because with the way we cut the forms and we've got the, the curves already there, I don't have to do all pinching like I did before. So learn some new tri tricks and techniques and some workshops before you do that. And always take a spare brush. There's nothing worse if your brush gets stuck or it's contaminated. I'd use one brush for your whites. I'd use one brush, a different brush for your pinks and nothing gets contaminated at all. Also, I have a different daffin dishes for different colors as well. So everything is in its purest state when you compete. And people think, oh, I won't bother that. You'd be surprised how much debris picks up in your brushes. Our brushes are NSI that I tend to have the um, the precision brush and we've just got a new brush that's coming out as well so keep your eye for this one this arrived for me you won't get it yet because this arrived for me only like last week and uh, i've been testing it for a year i actually love it and this is a precision elite so we've got two nice brushes that are really good for 
for competing. And it's down to size. So I would take one that's like got a very small point on it for like minute tiny bits for the very corners down the smile line. I'd have my main brush that is my smile line one. And you might want to have one that just is an overall. So take different size brushes for different techniques to make you that winning set of nails. We've introduced some new ones over the years. Stiletto came in. Um, and again, if you haven't st done stilettos, there's lots of things like this on, on the um, internet, or you can come to one of the classes. A lot of the judges hold classes. Uh, I hold classes just because I'm a competition director. I still teach, I do Zooms. Um, so if you need any teaching, you can always come, but also contact judges, past winners that hold competition workshops because you will learn so much. It just takes you to another level. And there's all these things to, to find out if you're not sure about um, certain shapes, push yourself and just learn a few more bits and pieces. So we added the Nail Masters, which was lots of different shapes. So we added a stiletto. Um, with the stiletto now, you could be sculpt on the tip, though you won't really find a, um, a stiletto tip really long enough for what you want. They have got, where stiletto has got more popular, they have got more beautiful and beautiful as times goes on as people's skill level has just come up so much and it's really lovely it makes me smile because if you could see when we first introduced it to what it is now you can see that progression and that's what it's all about if you look at and you look back to your first stilettos you go did i really do those you know how did i even get anywhere with that to these beauty ones you see now and the ones you see on instagram but the trick is, is can you do that beautiful stiletto in that time? So it, it can be sculpt or tip. Um, sometimes it's a pink and white stiletto, have a look. Sometimes it's a decorated stiletto, check your rules. Sometimes it's three pink and white and two. Um, so we have two in one. So do check your rules on what's uh, required. Your C curve is 60%. You can use your drills and things like that in there and oils and products can be used. OK, so just check the rules on your individuals. Here's just two examples here. So there's the masters, which is the three different shapes on that one. We've got the stiletto, we've got lipstick, we've got edge and we've got pipe. And we actually did change that this year. But we don't want to make it when people say, oh, why aren't you doing this? And why aren't you doing that? It's got to be accessible for everyone. So we do change it and step it up because people's skill level gets so much better. Let's push you again because the Nail Masters is your highest level. And I think we added Butterfly and Russian Almond into it this year, which I'll go through. And if you look at the length of the stilettos, we have a minimal length of stiletto, but you can do them as long as you like, but as long as they're balanced and stunning. So this is the Butterfly. Those of you who haven't had a go at doing the Butterfly, Again, the length is, there's a minimum length, but you can do longer. But do check the rules, because if we are restricting you to lengthwise, that's because it's easier for the judges, because it's either there or it's not, it's there or it's not. So that's why. But don't just go, oh, well, I like mine like that. If it says 30 millimetres max, do it 30 millimetres. Otherwise, you're losing points. Doesn't matter if they look more stunning. It's about what you can do within those rules. Okay, so there's a little few hints and tips there on how to put your form when you do your classes. There are some quicker ways to, to do your form that we've adapted. And if you come to the NSR universities, you'll learn all about how to do that and you'll learn absolutely loads. We had an amazing time last year. So keep a look out for when we set the, um, the new dates for the NSR universities because you'll learn all of this there. And it's just amazing. We do those worldwide. So whatever country you're looking in, look up your NSR universities because we travel all over the world doing them. The Russian almond, we did tend to do that as another another shape. So again, if you haven't heard about the shape, think what is that? There are things online that you can actually look at. Things about form, where they go up, where the form goes down, where your um, apex should be, all about that and what ratios we're looking for. Photographic is one of my favourites, actually. Um, when we first used to launch photographic, you used to have to print off your photo, frame it and bring it to the show with you. So you can see how it's changed and the digital market's changed. We have changed a few things on the photographic because, again, when photographic first started, people were taking their own photos. Now a lot of people have upped their game because 
uh, as a now tech, we work a lot more alongside uh, magazines, fashion shoots, makeup artists and things like that. So that's like really quite cool. So what we've said is now is like we're not going to look on the photoshopping because you can get so many apps now where you can change the photoshopping. Um, and sometimes we wouldn't know and it's not fair. So there are hints and tips on that that have actually changed. So just to give you an idea on the photographic, this is a classic. So if you look on the classic, it can be a French or it can be an all over color, but everything in the background has to relate to the theme that's given for the competition. Photographic nail art, the theme will be like usually the same all the way through the competition. Um, and then it can be whatever you like. So it's with the makeup, it's with the hair, it's with the props that come do that. So you can think right outside the box with that. So that's really quite cool. Box mix media. With box mix media, you have to see the curvature of those nails. And it's a 10 nails. They can be long ones, they can be short ones, it can be wherever you like. They don't have to be in a straight line. You can see they can be slightly out. You can have five down and five up. We haven't got any height restrictions anymore. But you have to use at least three mediums. And um, whoever's worked these are, they're lovely. I've taken so many photos after the years. I've just pulled in different ones from different shows. So there's lots of different ones that we could go, but literally if you, I was just picking some out. So it must be three mediums minimal, 10 tips only. If you have 12 tips, you're gonna be disqualified. And the tips, you must see the shirt because it's harder to, um, to decorate a curve than it is a flat. And if you see on the one on, uh, on my right, might be your left, depends on how you're looking at it. You can see they don't have to be all stuck together, but as long as they are um, 10 tips and how they're decorated. The hand painted. This actually came about because uh, when One Stroke came in with all the gel paints and, and the art things, how to decorate them without using 3D. So we used it because we was just getting lots of flowers, we then changed it and just said, it's with the theme, but it's hand painted. You can do whatever you like. So again, it's like 10 tips decorated, but it has to be totally flat. It can be matte finish, it can be shiny, doesn't matter, but as long as it's um, all hand painted. Now we, this year was quite interesting. I was having um, a chat with some of the, uh, the judges when we did the last show and um, we put quite a few of them because we used to do work over two days. We went down to one day. So we put some of the competitions online. Now, years ago, I've been judging internationally for 10, 15 years. And 10 years ago, I actually judged a, um, one where they sent in four different photographs. Um, from different angles and a finished one to have a look. And that was quite interesting because I actually did pick out that someone had cheated. So um, you can actually tell as a good judge if someone is cheating. But the only thing is, is that when it's online like that, it's like people say, well, how can you tell? Then we came on to where Instagram now, people are doing tutorials. And remember, competition is about you improving your skills. It's about pushing you to the next level. So where... People like me have become ambassadors. We have to do stage work now. We have to do videoing. We have to talk. We have to get confidence in different things. So the last competition we did, we said, um, you put little film together that's gonna be, I think it was three minutes long, where you, you're doing your nails and you break it down, you do a voiceover of how, of how you put it together. And one comment that came out was like, oh, I'm showing everyone all my hints and tips. And I'm thinking, not really, because if you put it on Instagram, it would be the same sort of thing. So we did that to actually push your skills. Now, the other thing that was coming on, I was talking to uh, one of the judges the other day, and we were talking about um, teaching and Zoom and everything else and how much clearer it is you can see. And um, and Hazel uh, Dixon actually came up and said, well, why don't you try doing the competition like online by by doing a zoom or something like that because then we can actually see you live and there's lots of different things some people we want with online competitions we want to eliminate as far as we can can we want to eliminate cheating so we want to know that the nows that we are judging you have done that so we've done this little thing at the end and it would be interesting to see as 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 you guys as the online competitions as in certain categories, 
do you have any ideas about that? Have you got any ideas about how we can, because I'm starting to write rules and regulations for that side of it. Did you like the idea of doing little mini Instagram ones? Because you can, after the show, you can put that on your site. You can put that on your Instagram. The, the magazines will be pushing that for you. It's, it's almost like projecting you already. I thought that would be quite popular. So you can show off your skills, have an edited version that either win a competition for it, and then it's ready to go for you to push social media. You could then get maybe get backing from somebody on that. So what's your thoughts on the new competitions that we actually launched? Do you prefer them live? Are you quite happy to do certain things? So, you know, give us the, the thoughts and feedback. So that's all the competitions. There's lots of other categories that we could go. It was quite interesting, actually, because with all this lockdown, I've actually gone through my loft at, at my shop. I've been there 20 years. And um, I've still got score sheets and um, box now like, that I've collected and brought back with me from the last like probably 15 years. So uh, I, I picked up them. We did one which was called um, Like for Like, remember Fancy French and all ones that would probably raise themselves as skill levels come on. You know, so any ideas or is there a competition you sort of go, do you know what, that would be really good. Let's have some ideas and throw it out there for discussion. So hopefully I've given you some bits to, to talk about, to think about. If you've got any questions, it's uh, good to go to question and answer now. So I've been chatting away for like half an hour. So let's see uh, what your thoughts are. Fabulous. Thank you, Denise. That was really, really interesting. We've had lots of um, lots of comments over on the Facebook page and people asking some questions in here too. So that's great. So yeah, now is the time. If you've got any questions for Denise, um, do type them in. If you're watching on Zoom, the Q&A box at the bottom of your screen. Um, you can also see the chat box here in Zoom. So feel free yep. to type things in there. Um, or if you're watching over on Facebook, then type them in the chat. Um, so yeah, we've had a few questions through already. Oh. Um, over on Facebook, we've had the question, are you doing new gel sculpture nail courses soon? Yes, well, um, what, are, what I'm doing, especially now, it's like this, they can be more tailored, which is quite good, because obviously being really busy, I'm always usually, usually travelling all over the world, so it's actually been quite nice to be settled and doing some uh, teaching. But, yeah, just get in contact with me, and I'm sure we can, like, sort something out uh, for any, anyone who wants any teaching or hints and tips or stuff like that. No problem at all. Fabulous. Um, we had another question which actually kind of relates to the online competitions as you were just speaking about. So Katia um, says, hi Denise from South Africa, which is hi, Katia. Cool. <laughs> international audience, which is fantastic. Uh, Katia's um, one of our, um, she's the, like me, a purple platinum educator. So she does the, uh, uh, travels around the world with me teaching. So hi um, Katia. <laughs> excellent. So um, her question over here is, can international text enter photographic? Do you have to be there to enter? So I suppose, you know, this, this may be related to the um, online competitions as you're speaking about. It might open things up to more international text. But, um, yeah, well, photographic, photographic is really uh, the one that we tend to get more of the internationals in because they can send it in. We do like them to be there to pick up a trophy because there's nothing worse if we're shouting out, you know, yay, so-and-so's won, and there we go never mind hey <laughs> and uh, and we have to get it posted but if what you have to realize if you're not there to pick up a trophy because you're from a different country then you have to uh, put the cost of actually getting your trophy posted out to you but yes welcome into any international ones that'd be great excellent and another question we've had is are there any nail competition courses that people can do before they start entering is there anything specific about more yeah. about these kind of tips. If you, if you go uh, online, I mean, um, all the judges that we have are all competition winners themselves, and they are all um, experts because they've won, they've judged, they've been on the competing side, they've been on the judging side. So they all held workshops all over the uh, all over the UK. So it depends if you want to travel. Though again, now you can do it over Zoom, so we can do some workshops over that. I'm sure lots of people are are doing Zoom classes. So have a look at work and who your favourite person is for that or if you've got an educator that you like see what they're doing for the competition workshops but yes definitely I would say you would learn so much from a competition workshop I think it prepares you and I think you get more from it so when you actually do compete you can reflect back and it all then slots into place great thanks very much and another question we've had over here is are there any competitions for novices 
and someone else saying, please, can you bring back the student competition? <laughs> <laughs> what is there out there, I suppose, for the, the newer techs to compete? The thing was that with the, um, the student techs is it depends on what time of year we found of uh, when the competitions are, because um, if you've only just signed up with your course, you're not ready to compete because you haven't actually learned that skill yet. So yeah. unfortunately with, with students it is about um, timing, but we did have them. And the reason why we pulled them is because we didn't get the entrance. So you need to push your college lecturers. So if there's any college lecturers out there, <laughs> <laughs> you know contact me I'm quite happy to help you get uh, a little bit for the students or if you have any ideas or maybe you're reading the rules and regulations and you're thinking that's too hard for my students let's put a student competition together that's going to work for your students so colleges contact me let's work together on that absolutely great Definitely. I think that is, it's about getting everybody involved and getting the colleges a bit rolled up for this as well. So yeah. Um, there's been a couple of questions about the competition plan for October and someone's asking, will the themes be the same? Will the categories be the same? I know this is something yes. that's under review at the moment, but I'm not sure how much we can share at the moment. <laughs> but usually the theme will be the same because the theme's not been used. So, and I know some people have already um, entered their photographic and they would have done their box because you've got to remember with photographic nail art and box nail art, especially on themes, people sometimes start four months in advance, which is why at every show I tend to give out the theme for the next year. So it gives them, there's no excuses, you know, you've got a whole year to prepare, you know what it's going to be because, and that was really a learning curve for me when I first started, we used to, I think, give them about six weeks and everyone went into a meltdown because it wasn't long enough. And um, and one of the judges sort of said, oh, I used to do it over about four months. I went, did you? Oh my God. And I thought, oh, well, let's give people, because you want to show off your best work, don't you? So it takes time. Excellent. Okay, so the theme for October will be the same. Obviously, I think like with everything that's um, coming up for the show in October, we're really carefully reviewing things as the rules change around social distancing and things like that. So we will be able to bring you more information about and the show in general pretty soon but if you have a look over on professionalbeauty.co.uk um, website there's lots of information about measures that we're taking to make the show as safe as possible so do have a look there and, and obviously that's updating as we get more and more advice and mm. um, fabulous so I think that is it in terms of questions Denise and we're coming to the end of the time but we've had loads of comments as well of people just saying thanks so much for this and um, yeah. somebody has said over on Facebook super webinar really helpful, helpful and down to earth um, wow. I think it will help people feel welcome to join in and have a go, which is obviously what we're trying to do, get more people involved. Absolutely. Because if you think just from competing, which is what I've done, I now have gone, you know, when I first started, you was either, you had a salon, you was mobile or you was a teacher. You think now I've done TV work. You know, I've been ambassador, I've written for City and Guilds, I've been involved in putting standards together, I now travel all over the world, I've done filming, I've been on TV, I've done celebrities, just from doing competitions. Open your world up, mm. have a go, what have you got to lose? Absolutely, and it's such a great start, and I think as, as much as anything, it really just, as you've said, kind of helps your skills, it helps you keep to time, even if you don't want to get out of time. Love it. Clients absolutely love it and they are so excited for you, you know, and it just gives your salon that extra edge from everybody else. Definitely. All right, well, thanks so much, Denise. This has been a great webinar. I think we've had great comments. So I really appreciate you joining us today. And thanks everyone else for watching. Excellent. See you later, everyone. Thanks. And if everyone wants to see the rest of our webinar lineup, if you just go over to professionalbeauty.co.uk forward slash webinars, you can see everything we've got coming up for the rest of this week. And we always update them around Saturday. So you'll see next week fairly soon as well. And hopefully see you soon. Bye.